जानति मीरांधस गैनांजन सलाकया चक्षुरुन मिलितं जेना तस्माइ स्वीगुरवे नमः वंशा कल्पतरुभस्च निपासिंधु भये वचा पतिता नंग पावने भो बैष्णवे भो नमो नमः सप्ताह में बच्चतहस्त पंकजे भिंगायमानम् फलमूलकंदरई संसेपमानम् हरिमात्म भिंदकई गोवर्धनाद्री सिरसानमामि हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे First of all, I pay my humble obeisances, the lotus feet of my Paramaradha Guru Pad Padma, Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata, Sushimad Bhakti Vedanta Silova Mangasai Maharaj, and Om Vishnu Pad, Paribraja Gacharya Varja, Asto Tarasata, Sushimad Bhakti Vedanta Silova Narayan Gasai Maharaj. I pay my obeisances, the lotus feet of my spiritual grandsire, Nittalila Prashtang Vishnupad, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Kesav Gosai Maharaj and Nittalila Prashtang Vishnupad, Sila Bhakti Ansami Maharaj. In my obeisances, all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who assembled here to listen Harikatha from Gurudev Lotus Lips, headed by Trinandri Sannasis. Sila Gurudev ordered me about Govardhan pastimes which described by Sila Vaisdev in Srimad Bhagavatam. I think most of you have traveled to India during Brajamandal Parikrama. How Srila Gurudev <coughs> and all devotees under guidance of him, they observing Annakut Mahotsav. I think all of you have seen that scene in Giriraj Govardhan. So, when Krishna was appeared in Bhoma Vrindavan, his pastime was going on continuously. And Nanda and Jasoda, especially Mother Jasoda, has so much love for Krishna. Once, early morning, Mother Jasoda was preparing so many preparations. Krishna saw, oh, today Mother is very busy. What she is doing? Krishna came to Mother Jasoda and asked, Maya, why are you preparing so many preparations? Is my birthday today? <laughs> Mother took, mm hmm, yes, no. Is birthday of Dao Bhaiya? Mother said, no. Mm -hmm. No. Don't disturb me. Go and play. <laughs> Krishna became really upset. My mother never behaved like this way with me. What is the mystery behind this? He went to Nanda Baba. He took his seat on the lap of Nanda Baba. And holding his hand, his Nanda Baba's neck by his hand, and touching his chin and told, Baba, is my birthday today? <laughs> or birthday of Dao Bhaiya? No, no, no. Then why my mother is preparing so many preparations? I went to my mother and mother told, go and play, go to your Baba. <laughs> what is the cause behind this? Nanda Baba replied, oh, today is Indra Puja. Baba, Indra Puja? Krishna being supreme personality Godhead. In presence of Jagmaya potency, like he knows nothing. <laughs> Baba, who is Indra? Where he lives? Why you worship Indra? Why do you get benefit by this worship? Asking so many questions. Nandava replied, Indra is king of all demigods. And if you worship him, he will be pleased. And Indra is predating deity of rain. And, but due to his causeless mercy, we are getting rain and our main property is cows. So cows grazing grass and drinking water. If there is no rain, then cow could not graze grass, then grass will die. And no rain, how they can drink? Then how we can get milk and so many milk products? So we must have to worship Indra. Then Krishna told Baba, why are there no worship of Indra there? There is no rain. There is no one survived there. I think this is not proper. 
then Nandavatam, what is the proper? Now Krishna is giving his scientific argument to Nanda Baba. Baba, I think, better to worship Giriraj Govardhan. Giriraj Govardhan is so tall. Whenever rain clouds are passing through one place to another area, then due to the attraction of Govardhan Hill, it comes down as a form of rain. Due to Giriraj, costless marriage of Giriraj Govardhan, like Govinda Kunda, Kusum Saravar, Manasi Ganga, Radha Kunda, Sam Kunda, and in Braj, so many kundas full of water and so many green green grasses, soft grasses, cows grazing there and giving us milk. So Dandavada said, what we will do? Baba, better you can announce all of her Braj. So all Brajavasis took their preparation will go to Giriraj Govardhan or worship Giriraj Govardhan. The Nandava is king of Braj. He announced all of her Braj in ancient India. They, how they broadcast, how they announce, they will go T Junction or her four roads meeting together. They cross road, they beating the drum. Hearing the drum, when people will come, they will announce, today is, was Indra Puja, but from today, exchange of Indra Puja will also be Raj Govardhan. So all Prajabasis, they must take their all paraphernalia and go to Giraj Govardhan under guidance of Nanda Baba. So all Prajabasis did so. In Garga Sangita, Gargacharya wrote, Krishna is Jivaraj and Nanda Baba is Maharaj, Nanda Maharaj. How they went to Giraj Govardhan? By walking? Gargacharya told, no. They went riding on elephant. Even Gargacharya told, I was with them riding on elephant to Giraj Govardhan. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Now, rest of this is Samarandi will speak, and which you have heard us before about Supreme Treasure of Supreme Treasure of Gurudev. Today is Annakut Mahotsav, and the book will come, and Gurudev will stay, all party will stay reading Brajabandal Parikrama in Govardhan, will publish in book form. Apart that, I need blessings from. Sila Guru Dev and all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurun Lidhamina this my Sri Guru Venama. First, I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Diksha Guru Dev, Nichalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Padasto to the Sri Shima, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shiksha Guru Dev, Om Vishnu Padasto to the Sri Shima. Shri Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our Guru Vaga, all the Sanyasi Gun, and all assembled devotees. Shri Guru Dev has uh, ordered me to continue the uh, history of Krishna and his family and the residents of Vrindavan worshipping Govardhan Hill. So, Krishna, uh, in order to uh, Established the glory of Giriraj Govardhan, he convinced his father and the elderly cowards men, and they convinced all the residents to worship Govardhan. At that time, they made so many preparations, fried preparations, samosas, pakoras, mounds of rice, chapatis, and so many sweet preparations, and all the residents offered these preparations at the lotus feet of Giri Raj Govardhan. They also circumambulated Giri Raj Govardhan. The gopis, young gopis, elderly gopis, sat on bullock carts, and Krishna and Balaram, the coward boys, they all joined in the procession with their hundreds and thousands and millions of cows, and they were all worshipping Giriraj Govardhan. Krishna himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who was showing 
that Giriraj Govardhan is himself supreme, he worshipped Govardhan and performed Arti to Govardhan. And Govardhan himself, Krishna himself, in the form of Govardhan, said that he wants more and more. Anayor, Anayor. And then the residents of Vrindavan, of course they prayed for what they wanted. Please let our son Krishna have good long life and good health to defeat all the demons. And they uh, told, we gave you all that we have. And so Govardhan said, Triptos me, Triptos me. I'm satisfied with your worship. So everybody was satisfied. Govardhan was satisfied. But Indra Dave was not satisfied. He was thinking, why are they listening? Why are they so foolish to listen to this little talkative boy who's an ordinary boy? I'll show them that they should just worship me. Sometimes, if one is not pure and his false ego becomes hurt by uh, negligence, he becomes greatly angered and he wants to show his power. So Indra, although a devotee of the Lord, by the Lord's will, played this pastime of becoming furiously angry with the residents of Vrindavan. And he decided to destroy all of Vrindavan. So he called for his very, very powerful clouds, the Sambarta clouds, which are the clouds that are called for at the time of destruction of the entire world. And he ordered those clouds to completely devastate Vrindavan. So all the residents of Vrindavan became mortified because the rain came down as thick as pillars and as sharp as arrows. And gradually, no one could discern the difference between the highlands and the lowlands. Everything was filled up with rains. So they went to Krishna and prayed for some help. And so Krishna himself decided to lift Govardhan Hill. And he went to Govardhan Hill and he lifted Govardhan with a little pinky of his left hand. This is very significant for several reasons. Externally, he's showing that defeating Indra is the business of my left pinky. And he lifted Govardhan Hill just as an elephant would lift a lotus flower. So now everybody is under Govardhan. But there are internal reasons why Krishna desired to perform this pastime and why he put that anger in the heart of Indra. Krishna wanted the association of Radharani and the gopis in a way that would not be uh, criticized by any of the other Brijbasis. So here, everyone would have to come close to him because everyone has to be under the protector protection of the supreme umbrella or Govardhan. At that time, when Indra was pouring down the rain, Srila Gurudev explained that Krishna's chakra went around and around on top of Govardhan and all of the lightning bolts and thunderbolts that were sent by Indra were smashed to little tiny thousands and millions of pieces. Also, Vaishnavanam Jatasambhu, Lord Shiva, Gopiswara, Mahadev, who is the Lord's great devotee, he became known as Chakaleshwar Mahadev, or Chakreshwar Mahadev, Shivji, who has served Krishna in so many ways. And in Vrindavan, he serves by holding up his trident. And that trident, in addition to Krishna's own chakra, that trident held up also smashed all of Indra's thunderbolts, lightning bolts, into millions of pieces. And not allow the water to come down. So, many of the um, 
Brajbasis, according to their particular relationship with Krishna, thought about this incident in various ways. In Vrindavan, there's no sense of Aishwarya. There's more Aishwarya in Vrindavan, more opulence in Vrindavan that there is in Vaikuntha, in Dwarka, in Mathura, but it's so covered by the sweetness of Naravatalila or human-like relationships that that opulence is not felt at all. So when Krishna was lifting Govardhan, the cowards boys, they never imagined that Krishna is God. Their so-called Aishwarya Bhav was that Krishna is going to be getting tired. I think we're going to have to help him with our sticks, with our coward sticks. So many of the cowards boys tried to help Krishna out because Krishna is only our friend and he needs help. What is the Aishwarya Bhav of Nanda Maharaj? My son is not lifting that mountain. I do worship to Lord Narayan. And so Lord Narayan has now appeared in the body of my son. And he is lifting Govardhan. And what is the so-called Aishwarya Bhav of the gopis seeing Govardhan on the tiny finger of Krishna? Firstly, it is by the power of Srimati Radhika herself that Krishna was able to lift Govardhan. As we know, Srimati Radhika stands on the left side of Krishna. So it's very significant that it's Krishna's left hand and the most left finger of his left hand that's lifting Govardhan. Which means, of course, everybody performs activities by their power. But Krishna's power, his Shakti, his Swarup Shakti, his Pada Shakti, his Antaranga Shakti, is Srimati Radhika, who, whose power uh, divides into different functions of the spiritual world, of all the living entities in the material world, Jeev Jagat, and then manifests as this Bahiranga Shakti, this material world. So it's by Radharani's power that Krishna is able to lift Govardhan. When Krishna disappeared from the gopis, the gopis performed, they became so absorbed in separation of Krishna that they were imitating his pastimes. So one of the gopis, by her veil, she said, look at me, I'm Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. She was only lifting her veil, but Gurudev said, actually, if she wanted, she could have lift that, lifted that mountain, because it's by the power of the gopis that Krishna was able to lift Govardhan Hill. And what were the gopis thinking? What was their so-called, quote-unquote, Aishwarya Bhav? They were saying, Oh Govardhan, if you fall down one inch on our beloved Nagara, Krishna, the topmost, not supreme personality of Godhead, but the topmost beloved, then by our glance, we will burn you to ashes. So stay where you are. And what is Mother Yasoda thinking? She's in so much anxiety for her son's welfare. And when she understood and heard from everybody later, your son, I mean Krishna, lifted Govardhan Hill. What did she think? Oh, now everybody's going to think how great my son is. He's going to be so popular. <laughs> no question. When Gurudev was telling about this once in Holland, he said, the Bhujbasi will say, all right, well then if he's God, then let him give us salvation because we're in so much separation. We need relief of this uh, separation. That was Nanda Maharaj's mood. So there, Aishwarya Bhav is never Aishwarya Bhav but always in anxiety and thinking, yes, my son is now going to be so popular, just like parents do. So, Krishna, now that the gopis were close to him, Krishna and Radharani were able to glance, share stealthy glances at each other. And what happened to Krishna as he was lifting over Dunhill and totally controlled by the glance of Srimati Radhika? As we hear from Prabodha Nanda Saraswati, just by the momentary sidelong glance of Radharani, Krishna's Gitambara, his shawl, 
falls down from his shoulders, his flute falls from his hands, and he begins to faint. So this also happened, Srila Gurudev explained, at the time of Krishna's lifting over Dun Hill. So Madhu Mangal had to hold on to him by his waist and say, Krishna, because now the, the hill was trembling. So Madhu Mangal said, Krishna, this is no time to faint. You have to hold up this hill. <laughs> so the Bridgebazis are so fortunate that although Krishna is exhibiting the most Aishwarya filled pastimes, at the same time, they have the supreme uh, fortune of having Krishna as their friend, as their son, as their beloved. In the meantime, Lord Indra saw that nothing was happening. Everything was still fine with the residents of Vrindavan. So he was getting, by Krishna's causeless mercy, the realization in his heart that I think I'm doing something wrong. So he went to Surabhi, the uh, cow, Surabhi, and begged her mercy that she would take him to apologize to Krishna. So they went to Govindakund, they went to Govindakund, where Indra himself worshipped Krishna, and Indra's elephant, Airavata, he bathed Krishna as an Abhishek ceremony with the water coming from his um, trunk. And at the same time, uh, the syrupy cow bathed Krishna by the milk coming from her udders. And in this way, Krishna became Govinda. He is the, he became the Indra. They take the name of I'm sorry? Govinda. Say that again. That cow kept the name Govinda. She named him oh. Govinda. And in that way, Krishna is worshipped as Govinda, the supreme uh, controller or master of all the cows, of the land, and the senses. And mostly his name is Govinda because he gives pleasure to uh, Srimati Radhika. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guruve Gora Chandra Radhika Tadale Krishna Krishna Bhakta Tadavakta Namonama What's left? <laughs> so, Shamani actually finished everything. <laughs> Maybe some drops are here and there. So first of all, I give pranams to Srila Gurudev, Vaishnavas, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So Indra, he was very much afraid because he had abused Krishna so much. Who is that Krishna? He's stubdom, he is very proud. He's balish, he is very childish. He is Pandit Maninam. He thinks himself the big big pandit. He is Bachal. He speaks so much. So Saraswati Devi, the goddess of learning, how she can tolerate the Supreme Lord being abused. Therefore she gave some other meaning for these words. Who is Krishna? Pandit Maninam. <coughs> Means who is, not that Krishna thinks he is a big pandit, a big learned person, but that person who accepts Krishna really he is a big learned person. No? So Krishna is Pandit Maninam. He has stopped him because there is no one else to bow down to except for him. Isn't it? All moving and non-moving entities are nothing else but his creation. Therefore Krishna is also called stopped him. Bachalam means even though the Vedic scriptures talk about him continuously, continuously, they cannot finish his glories. Therefore Krishna is also called Bachalam. His Balish means Krishna is very, very simple. One of the 64 qualities of Krishna, he never demands his respect. No? So all these abuses that Indra are giving, these are actual glorifications. Uh, he is the... Uh, so when Indra saw the incredible opulence of Sri Krishna, even though Krishna manifested incredible opulence, he lifted Govardhan, that time Govardhan was seven miles high. That's two and a half times the size of Everest. No? Twelve, seven miles high, twelve miles long. But Sri Krishna performed such a, it's such a huge display of opulence, but in the form of a seven-year-old boy. No? 
So after seven days and seven nights, Indra's pride was completely crushed. But he was very, very afraid. Maybe if I come to Krishna, maybe he'll sudarshan chakra my head off. You know? Could be, because Indra did big, big aparad. Isn't it? He tried to kill all Brijabasi. He tried to kill all the cows. So this is no small thing. Therefore, uh, he wanted to destroy all Brindavan. So this is huge aparad. No? Therefore, he was very afraid. So one secret is there. Sometimes if we make some big offense to Gurudev, what do we do? Or we catch the feet of Vaishnava. Oh, please, you come with me and say some good word to Gurudev in my ear. No? <laughs> so this is one secret of spiritual life. No? One time Ramchandra, there was, he had made a vow. One man had offended Bhagawan Ramchandra. So Ramchandra had vowed, tomorrow morning I will definitely kill you. So Gurudev is saying that Bhagawan is Satya Sankalpa. What he says must be true. So Bhagavan wants to finish you, then who's going to save you? So he was crying, crying, then Narad Muni came. Then Narad Muni said, why are you crying? Well, the Lord, Supreme Lord has vowed to destroy me. Then Narad Muni said, there's one secret. Catch hold of the feet of Hanuman and don't let go until Hanuman promises to protect you. So the man went and caught the feet of Hanuman. Hanuman, save me, save me, save me, save me. Then Hanuman said, okay, I promise to save you. Who wants to kill you? Lord Ram. <laughs> Hanuman was, oh Baba, who told you this? Narad, oh Narad. So in the morning, Ram Chandra took his arrow and went to kill that fellow. Then Hanuman was in the middle like this. And Ram said, move, move aside. And Hanuman said, Ram said, move aside, I have vowed to kill him. Hanuman said, you move aside, I have vowed to protect him. No? And Hanuman went like that to fight. In Bhagavan's nature, he always gives up his own promise to protect the words of the devotee. You know? Just like Krishna, he promised, I will not fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. The grandfather Bhishma, he promised, if I do not make Krishna fight, then I, am com I will not go to the destination of the Chatriyas. My name is not Bhishma, I am not the son of Ganga. So Krishna gave up his own promise to protect the promise of Bhishma. No? So Indra was too much perspiring, too much worried. What will I do? What will I do? That he knows the cows are very dear to Krishna. Go Brahmana Hitayacha. Krishna always desires the welfare of the cows and the Brahmanas. So Indra went to one planet of the cows, Golok. And there he caught hold of the hoof, the lotus hoof, of Surabi. She's like the queen, the head principal cow of that planet. So she came there and he was hiding behind Surabi. And Surabi, actually she offered prayers to Indra, but she abused. Oh, this Indra is a very cruel and nonsense fellow. He is meant to be Indra, means the protector of everyone. But he is not our protector because he tried to kill all the cows and residents of Brindavan. Therefore, only one Indra is there. Who is that? That is Krishna. He is the Indra of the cows. Therefore, Krishna got the name Govinda. And that place where Surabi prayed to Krishna on behalf of Indra, that is called Surabi Kund. Now, every year, Guru Maharaj, we go there with Gurudev, we take sweet rice in Malpur, and Gurudev speaks some kata, and Gurudev says, who takes bath in that place or remembers that place becomes free from all type of aparad. So this is one secret. It's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> Drama. So, drama should be ready. In the meantime, one kirtan. Oh, you. Kirtan. Oh, I have to. Do.